Um, we're now in public session and as we have a quorum, I call the meeting to order. Uh, apologies have been received from Deputy uh, Barry Cowan. At the request of the Broadcasting and Recording Services, members are requested to ensure for that, that for the duration of the meeting, their mobile phones are turned off completely or switched to aeroplane, safe or flight mode, depending <coughs> on their device. It's not sufficient for members just to put their phones on silent mode, as this will maintain the level of interference with the broadcasting system. Have you all got that on the mobile phones? <laughs> okay. In accordance with standard procedures agreed by the Committee on Procedure and Privileges for paperless committees, all documentation for the meeting has been circulated to members on the document database. Uh, I propose that we now go to private session to deal with correspondence and certain other matters. Uh, we're now in uh, public session. Okay, the order establishing the committee requires the committee to provide an interim report to the Dáil containing its proposed work schedule for consideration by the Dáil on the 28th of April. As discussed at the committee meeting on the 20th of April, a draft copy of the interim report was circulated to members last Friday and members were requested for any comments by 12.30pm yesterday. Um, so at this stage... We will, we've circulated the documentation. It has emerged there are 10 key issues which people seem to be happy to pursue. And I suppose the real issue is who members feel uh, should be the key witnesses for that. And just to confirm to the, uh, that we're in public session, just to confirm, this afternoon's meeting uh, will have the City and County Managers Association. And the meeting on Thursday. Uh, we'll have the Minister for the Environment, Minister Alan Kelly, in the morning, and the Housing Agency and the Irish Council for Social Housing in the afternoon. And that's the extent of the invitations that have been issued so far. The rest will emerge from the piece of work that we're going to do now. Um, working through the, the issues as they have been presented, we look at them in, in this order. Uh, the first one was uh, the government's strategy for housing and homelessness, and as I've indicated, uh, Minister Kelly has agreed and will be here on Thursday morning. Uh, any, and I, I would just remind members again, it's, it's a six-week period uh, for this, so you know, we need to manage the number of witnesses to be effective in what we're doing and to prioritise who, who we want on the different categories. Deputy O'Brien. Are you going to go through each of the, the headings and just look for suggestions of speakers yeah. at this point? I was, I was hoping that we would look for suggestions and maybe agree them as we go through it rather than <coughs> coming back to it. So we, yeah. we're dealing with the, the, okay. the first one, which is the government's strategy for housing and homelessness. And we have Minister Kelly agreed at this point in time for Thursday morning, yes. I suppose just a couple of things. I mean, there's, there's a couple of, of obvious names. Owen O'Sullivan from Trinity, who's one of the kind of country's leading academic experts in homelessness, would be a good witness to come in and somebody who's probably done the most up-to-date research in terms of causes of homelessness and funding models, etc. Cahill Morgan is obviously the, the head of the homeless agency that coordinates the services in the four Dublin local authorities. There is a need to have some of the NGOs, and, and one of the difficulties we're going to have is that there's obviously quite a large number of homeless service providers in the NGO sector. So rather than us, I think, cherry-picking and maybe inviting one organisation and upsetting another, there are some uh, existing forums of those organisations. So, for example, in Dublin, there is the, the uh, Homelessness Forum, which represents all of the service providers, the NGOs. There's a similar one in Cork, which I understand covers the county uh, and the, uh, the city. There's a similar one in Limerick, which I understand covers the city and the county. There used to be one in the south uh, east. I'm not so sure if it's still functioning. I'm not suggesting we invite all four, but we did say we wanted to get urban and rural and outside of Dublin. So from those forums, there might be a number of representatives we could invite. So I think that would have those rather than, say, inviting Focus on their own or Simon on their own and then upsetting Novus or Sophia or... Um, there's also probably an argument to say it would be good to have somebody who's maybe one of the heads of homeless services from one of the counties or the councils that's under real strain separate to the homeless executive uh, and somebody from the department responsible for homelessness too. But I know that's quite a long list. But Deputy O'Brien, you've covered a number of topics in, in one go and we will go, we'll go back to that. That's just all under the homelessness heading. Apologies. Yeah, but uh, uh, we I haven't got down as far as item six, which was homelessness. We were still on item one, which was the government strategy for housing. And the minister has been. Uh, so, are we happy that 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 he's the correct person for that? Okay. Yes. Um, great. 
The second area was social housing. Um, now, Deputy Durkin, you had mentioned about local authorities, and I think this is time that we specifically focus on, on some of those points that you had previously mentioned. I think, uh, Mr Chairman, the first issue that needs to be determined is the extent to which the local authorities are to be relied upon to provide social housing in the future. I believe that we have moved away from that over the last 10 or 15 years. I think it was a big mistake. And I think the reason that we have the problem we have now is because the emphasis was taken away and the, 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 the requirements were taken away from the local authorities. So I think it is absolutely imperative that we identify, uh, the, the, first of all, that we ensure that the local authorities are fully aware of the responsibility that should fall to them, that should fall to them, in the provision of what I call local authority housing, which is now called social housing, uh, for whatever reasons. I believe that it, they are in the best position to provide that, 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 that facility. I think that they have uh, the necessary uh, wherewithal to do it. They have at their fingertips all of the lands that are available in their respective areas. They have at their fingertips all the housing developments that are in their respective areas. They have available to them, arising from uh, the budget last year, the requirement to acquire housing and to build houses and to, 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 to in, introduce modular housing. So what we need to know there is how quickly can they do that? Uh, uh, how quickly can they put in place the necessary measures to address the degree of the requirement that exists in their respective administrative areas? On potential witnesses for social housing, uh, Deputy... That as well. Look, if there are barriers that they're experiencing in terms of delivering what they ought to be doing, they need to tell us about those barriers. Yes, absolutely. And certainly, the, the, the witnesses coming in this afternoon could certainly be linked with this, uh, this point. The, the, the committee has agreed that the witnesses this afternoon will be asked to go and collate the information from each local authority and submit it to the committee. Um, on those issues, that you, exactly as you have identified, Deputy Durkin. So that will come back as correspondence, local authority by local authority. I suppose the point we're at at the moment is in relation to social housing. The witnesses we might, separate to what we're doing this afternoon, are there other additional people we would like to bring here? Uh, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan. Yeah, just to follow up at that point, because I read the opening statement that was circulated from the, the managers coming in this afternoon, and it's the information is all bunched together, yes. so we don't have a sense of which of the particular areas, so I think that's really important. Durkin's suggestion yeah. hopefully will. Yeah, but it's just, um, it's a pity as he, they're coming in this afternoon that they can't bring that information with yeah. them. That's yeah. Deputy Butler. Um, thanks, Cahir. Look, yeah, I, th I think the... Um, the county and city managers coming in this afternoon is, is, is very important and I think we have a lot of questions to ask them because they are first and foremost providing the most of the social housing in the country. Um, I, I think we need to ask them about the turnover of void. Sometimes they are very, very slow. The purchase of private houses in council estates. In a, in a lot of instances, there are council estates built for 20 and 30 years where people would have purchased their own homes. Then they, um, they sell them on. And it's very, very difficult to get the council to actually rebuy one of their own council houses, especially down in the southeast. Because the problem is, you can, you can turn over a house down there for 95 or 100,000, and you certainly wouldn't build a house for that price. I also think uh, we should look at extensions on, on um, council houses, because a lot of times you, have, you might have a mother and a child in a house with another child, and they have have to get a tree bed and I, I think the, the, the option of, of adding on another bedroom um, would certainly help and I also think we have to have a serious look at the HAP scheme because that's causing huge problems everywhere. I would remind members at this stage that we're not discussing the issue as like we've I, and I'm not disagreeing with the points that members are raising but we're trying to identify specifically what actions as a committee. Now the first specific action we've dealt with today was Deputy Durkin's uh, piece but in terms of social housing and to address exactly the points that members are making who do the committee feel would be best in a position to answer some of those issues uh, deputy sean canning first please Thank you. i was going to say exactly what you said that we need to decide who we're bringing in are we happy with them i have a load of questions for this afternoon for eugene cummins and the other colleagues that are going in with them so i think this morning we should decide look at set out the structure, we ask the questions this afternoon. And if we don't do that, we'll end up talking for the six weeks. Mm -hmm. so I would, Deputy O'Brien. Yeah, doing. so just some suggestions. The head of the Irish Council of Social Housing, I think, is one of the people we should invite, because obviously they represent all of the, the voluntary housing providers in the social sector. I think we should have people... Uh, just to be of assistance, the Irish Council for Social Housing are our Thursday witness, Thursday afternoon. Okay. 
Then a couple of other suggestions. If we have, um, obviously, if we have South Dublin and Dublin City managers in today, we could look at maybe inviting a couple of other managers, uh, heads of housing from other local authorities. Limerick City would be interesting because they piloted HAP first, so the, the head of housing in Limerick City would be good. Again, I think we could use that as an opportunity maybe to take in some of the rural counties that are having a particular homeless problem. So again, if you could maybe look at between two and four managers from other local authorities in addition to the ones we have today, um, that would be useful. And also somebody from the department directly because obviously if we're asking the, the managers issues around the delay, for example, in drawing down funding, it would be useful to have the department in the same room at the time to give their view of it. So the relevant PO so, or... Deputy O'Brien, your, your proposal is three or four county managers with the Department of Environment in the session. So Deputy O'Dowd. <coughs> Just on that point, uh, we have an absence of knowledge here in terms of the, who is the best performance, who is the, which is the best local authority, where is the most innovative, uh, proactive council. And I'd love to find out who that actually is. So maybe we should ask uh, the county managers if they could. I, 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 I know what my own council does, but we, I don't know how every other council does. I think it's very important that we look for leadership within the local government structure, apart from the managerial structure, and that they might actually nominate somebody from their group who, who is actually innovative and is bringing about significant changes. Because I think they would be building not on a bureaucracy, but on a commitment and, 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 a, and a, an expertise and a drive and an energy. I mean, pardon, but, but I, I don't agree that there's nobody. I don't know that that's the case. But what I'm saying is we should ask them, uh, it, we should ask them how we bring about real change. That might uh, be addressed this afternoon. Yeah, no, what I'm saying yes. is that in terms of local authorities, we're talking about whoever and all of them are, we should allow them maybe as well, ask them rather. And I, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm agreeing with you, Deputy. I'm taking yeah. that's effectively what, what yeah. Deputy O'Brien was saying, yeah. but in conjunction with the department, that, that it would be a joint meeting was his proposal. Deputy Ryan, first. It just on the provision of social housing, uh, the role of the approved housing bodies is they're significant players, so I think we need to have uh, some of them in. Okay. Um, if we have the De De Deputy Wallace. If we have the yeah, uh, a couple of points. Um, I suppose, likewise, I mean, there's a. I'd say that the, the problems facing the different local authorities uh, are very different. Uh, like, for example, um, in Wexford, where there's a waiting list of 3,800 uh, on the social housing list, they actually don't have land, right? Whereas in places like Dublin, they have land, but they just haven't got around to building it. Uh, so we. There's a different, like for example, uh, I say if the, if someone from a county like Wexford, it wouldn't have to be Wexford, but people from a local authority where they actually don't have land, they are going to have to uh, uh, probably, uh, if they're to deliver suitable land quickly, they're probably going to have to look at compulsory purchase, right? Mm. Uh, so it's, it's a different area uh, that needs to be looked at uh, in terms of the, the, the immediate problems that they have if they're to turn around housing quickly in order to deal with the problem. Uh, with regard to the personnel uh, to be invited in for this, uh, uh, the one recommendation I would make uh, would be Rory Hearn of a Minute uh, Geography Department, uh, who I've heard speak a few times um, on the issue of uh, social housing, and he uh, has a pretty, uh, probably maybe a different take in some ways, but uh, I think he has uh, put a lot of work into it and has thought a lot about it, so I think uh, he would be interesting. And the last point I wanted to make was that uh, I sent a, I sent a, a reply in t to the, your office um, with regard to the 10 pints. Uh, do you intend to deal with them, generally speaking, as in the order you have them down, or is there? Um, because I was when I looked at the ten, I thought well maybe they should. If we're going to do them one by one, I thought the order should be a little different, as I sent in to you. I spoke to the uh, secretariat members about that, how we might do it, because it's a very short time frame. Um, it mightn't be. Look, always possible to get the witnesses you want for a given, for a, for a given day. Um, we can't afford to miss not having a session on a Tuesday or a Thursday. So 
we do need a degree of latitude for the Secretariat to try and get the relevant witnesses rather than just somebody turning up from the department so, or, or wherever we're asking. Well, so, okay, well, just my thinking on it, yeah. when I looked at your list, was just, I'm not saying that you can get everyone when you want them, uh, but uh, the element of finance is abs where are we going to get the money, how are we going to get the money, is absolutely crucial to an awful lot of things that we're going to talk about in the hour. And I think it should come earlier rather than later, that's all. Are members generally happy with that point? Yeah, well, just one more point. Now, we, now, can I, I'm taking that as a general point. We still have to deal with who the potential witnesses are, um, which is a different issue, and I don't want to get into that till we... No, you're, but I'm taking your point. Uh, I think we should, we should, we should, we should yeah. resolve initially to place the major part of the responsibility on the local authorities. They are best placed... And by virtue of what has happened over the past number of years, we have reached the situation we're in now. There are, there are no other bodies in the country that are better placed than the local authorities. And that requires money that can be provided, has been provided in budgets. How we use it is up to ourselves, or how they use it is up to themselves. But they are the people who have who are the first charge on the issue and ha are in the best position to be able to say how quickly they can do that job. If we, if, if, if we diverse into a whole lot of other areas with a whole lot of other options. We're going to be here in six months' time and in six years' time and we'll be doing the self-same thing. We need to concentrate on the issue and put the responsibility fairly with the people who know that job better than anybody else. Uh, and Deputy Durkin, I understand that's the first step that the committee have, have taken. They have the City and County Managers Association this afternoon who will be then asked to get the information that you have, and there will be a follow-up meeting with local authorities and the Department of Environment to exactly develop the point that you have, you have made. And, and it's your proposal that we're, we're going to, to act on. Uh, Deputy Ruth Coppinger. Okay, thank you. Um, it is very rare I find myself agreeing with, with Deputy Durkin on anything, but I, I do agree that the local authorities are, have to be the key to delivering social housing because they're the people who delivered it in the past for... 80 to 90 years, although there is another agent now, and that is NAMA, and I know we have NAMA separately, but I'm just saying they could be asked to deliver a lot more social housing, and they probably should be in pretty much sooner after that session. Um, but that, well, that actually is something that has to be teased out. What role would the local authorities and NAMA play? But um, if we are inviting people to present... I, Obviously, it's good with the housing agencies, but I do think we should look at academics and people who've studied yeah. the delivery of social housing, the land costs, what's led to the current you know, problem. There needs to be some... I'm not talking about big lectures for a half an hour, but I, I would agree. I mean, people like Rory Hearn um, has written extensively on this. Uh, we, we suggested in our submission um, others as well. I mean, I, I can name them if you want like John Bissett, uh, Carl O'Connell and Joe Frinity from UCC. But I do think we need some, it shouldn't be just us asking housing agencies. Um, and, and lastly, I, I think it's good that Dublin City Council are coming in, but there is other councils in the county of Dublin. For example, there's 769 families homeless in Dublin at the moment. One third of them are in Fingal County Council, which is the council. I'm in. So we have a di disproportionate problem, and yet there's nobody coming in from that local authority. So I do think so we should. Deputy, we haven't yeah. done the list. I, no, so I'm just going to say either that, at that session or at a later session, we need to have those people in because they're at the epicentre well, of the scenario. That deputy will be your prerogative to make that proposal. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're like. We well, I did make it <laughs> okay. in the submission. Uh, deputy Catherine Burton. You haven't done it. Okay. First of all, uh, I don't know what criteria the managers were given for this afternoon's uh, meeting. I don't know what they were asked to come at a blank canvas or to bring all the necessary information. I think that they would have their, their fingertips anyway. I can't expect any of the, the people you've said are coming not to be able to come at some of the information that is really needed here. And many of the questions I think could be probably answered this afternoon. And uh, I think we should wait and see what that will be. Can I just also say that I would like to see somebody like Alice Leahy invited in. Oh, Alice Leahy oh, from Trust. Alice is somebody who deals with the homeless at the cold face on a day-to-day -day basis. And as well as academics, I think we should be looking at those people 
Just, just can I interrupt you for one yeah. moment, Deputy? Um, I'm not disagreeing with you, yeah. but we're, we're still on item number two, social housing, and you, you referred to, uh, I suppose, homelessness and Alice Leahy and whatever. I would like to try and finish who we want on section two, just on the social housing um, element of it. Uh, and we'll take Alice Leahy under when we get down to homelessness, if that's okay with you, Deputy. Yeah, well, I mean, Alice Leahy would be somebody who knows exactly what's going on on the street. She about social housing, though, which is what we're talking about right now. Yeah, so we, we just conclude on social, on social housing. So, Deputy Butler. Social housing and the financing of it, I'd like to see the Irish League of Credit Unions invited in. Okay, hold, hold one moment. We're on social housing. We'll come to the financing okay. bit in a moment. I'm not being dismissive of it. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a section in its own right, right that fine. requires. So, um, Deputy O'Dowd. Chairman, just, uh, this is to do with, not so much with a policy issue in terms of housing, but it's a hugely important issue, is how applicants are actually dealt with by local authorities. And it's about the protocols that should be in place. And one of the key issues I find, I know if other people here find it, is that um, if you're on the list for, say, a significant period of time, five, six, seven years or whatever, uh, the local authorities, which were in the past a very good uh, listening post, very people trained and able to deal with other issues that arise with families, it's just that the, what I can put it to you this way, uh, is that there needs to be a, a universal uh, protocols in place for dealing with applicants in terms of respect for them, about not discussing their business in front of other people, uh, and, and about that sort of thing. It's, it's hugely important in my view. And, and perhaps the best way to put it might be to ask perhaps the county managers or whatever, uh, you know, as what, what are, should there be protocols in place in every local authority for dealing with applicants in terms of respect for them as human beings, in, in terms of, you know, the listening, how you listen to them, where you listen to them, the privacy. All those issues are hugely important. Because I have people coming in to me who say, well, I'm at a hatch and, you know, everybody can hear what's going on or, you know, there's all sorts of human issues that have to be dealt with. And I think, uh, without going through them all myself, I think that perhaps it, we just look for, for them to come back with us, a list of protocols as how people, and indeed it applies to every local authority query anyway, but particularly housing applicants who have significant family problems, who have huge huge problems other in many cases other than their actual housing need you know which is compounded by their housing need deputy ryan uh, just on this issue social housing i mean when we're talking about social housing we're talking about delivery of social housing we're talking about rapid delivery of social housing the players would be the department the local authorities approved housing bodies i don't think in the time we have available to us we have time to wheel in people to give us opinions academics you know, people we've heard, you know, speaking well at meetings, you know, we can, we can find a way for them to make some kind of a submission to this committee without necessarily having to, to come in here. But certainly we need to focus on delivery, not opinion. Deputy O'Sullivan. So this afternoon we're starting with the local authority. In County Managers yeah. Association, yeah. yes. Um, but there's also an overlap because of Cahill Morgan coming in because he's homelessness. And he, to me, would be, would be vital to have him in when we're talking about homelessness. So I think we are going to overlap as we're going along. Are we happy to leave a blank invitation to the housing agencies for them to send their representatives on Thursday? Or are we going to identify particular housing bodies? I know I accept the point that we leave some out and they might be offended, but have we decided that we're leaving it to the overall arching body to send who they wish? That has been the arrangement, yes. Yeah. At this point in time, yeah. right. for, this, for this week, because of the time scale that was available. Right. But as we go through this work programme, if there are particular people identified, and, and I'd ask the members to, to focus on that, we're trying to yeah. identify specifically who you want identify, brought to future meetings. That's the, you know... Um, and clearly, in relation to social housing, you've spoken about the local, relevant local mm -hmm. authorities with the Department of the Environment. Um, there was a suggestion, in terms of people who would have an academic background, uh, rather than provision, to just conclude on Deputy Ryan's point, do you want written submissions or do our, our members favouring, bearing in mind the time frame available, are members looking for them to attend? Deputy O'Brien. 
we have, and it's a further agenda item, the kind of the legal section. But yeah. when I was proposing it, I was thinking legal academic, and I think that's the point okay. at which we'd invite those so people. So we take so them out of social housing and put the. Is that what you're suggesting? And we deal with those people at that section because I think they have an important contribution to make. Okay. Deputy Catherine yeah, Burke. First, I want to agree with what um, Brendan has said. Just to support him on that, I believe that we, we all have read books about uh, social housing and people's. I, I very much doubt that, that you've read anything any of those people have written, in fairness. We, Deputy. I mean, we're working here to try to find solutions. Yes. If somebody expresses a view or, or gets, gets the floor and, and, and has a point to make, they should be allowed to make their point without interruption from other members. And we must show respect for everybody here. I could I, could well, I, I'll, I'll put up my hand to speak, sorry. Yeah. Could, I, could I ask members to speak through the chair and we will um, try and conduct it in as orderly a manner yeah, as possible. Well, Deputy Coffinger. Sorry, to the chair. Oh, sorry, was, Deputy, Deputy. I wasn't finished. Sorry, Deputy, so, my apologies. My opinion, and I'm speaking as somebody who has read a lot of the academics books on homelessness and housing and social housing. So to sit here and have somebody accuse me that I haven't, I find very offensive. And my second point is, I really believe because we're speaking about social housing, we need to speak to somebody in the social housing section of city council and the other local authorities as to why people are reluctant in communities to allow social housing be built in them and why there's such strong objection against modular housing. And I think we should have somebody from the councils to identify that as well here and to give the reasons why residents living in areas where there are accumulation of social housing, why people are so set against them being re social housing being built on particular modular housing. And I'd like to see somebody from Dublin City Council and Dublin South County Council, Fingal and all of those who deal with social housing on a daily basis. I'll take, uh, to be specific, because uh, we have agreed that we're going to invite, invite uh, the local authorities. And in terms of the point you make about the, the, reluctant, the, the, the objections to planning and the modular housing, we'll advise them in advance that yeah. those questions, so they will bring the relevant answers. On social housing, are we Thank happy to, to conclude there? Okay. Well, sorry, sorry well, look, I, I did put forward. Sorry. I, I don't agree with this idea from the previous two TDs that we shouldn't hear other points of view outside of the people who are already in the local authorities and in the government. The reason I said I doubt that you've read is because in the last five years there hasn't been any vision of providing local authority and public home building. And these people have made those points. So I just don't think that we should hear from the existing people who have a certain ideology. There needs to be other radical ideas. In response to that, I don't know. What, I think we could be at cross purpose, uh, cross purposes here. Uh, I have a strong view about the provision of local authority houses. Have had all my life. I didn't have to read about it anywhere. I grew up with that, and I pursued it all my political life, which was quite a long time. And I have no hesitation in saying that in the future, unless we rely on the local authorities to provide that main <coughs> response, the, the main thrust of the burden to deal with that, it's not going to happen. And the problem that we have now is as a result of dividing the responsibility, in other words, taking it away from the local authorities and handing it over to private agencies or voluntary agencies who do very good work in, 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 in their respective areas, but who are not capable of dealing with the burden of local authority housing as is required now. And the next part of, of, of the agenda is going to deal with, will, will, will overlap with that considerably as well. I think that the system that has been in place, and I spoke about this publicly and privately on numerous occasions over the last 15 years, and I predicted that it was going to fail. And the reason that it failed, is to, for the reason that I've just said, is there were too many people with responsibility and nobody had responsibility. Deputy Wallace. Yeah, given that... Uh that the last five years have been a disaster in relation to how we dealt with the supply of housing for all sectors. Uh, I'd be inclined to agree with Ruth that uh, some fresh thinking isn't going to kill us in here. Uh, I wouldn't let him come in here and talk for an hour, but if people with, with some fresh thinking are allowed in here and you confine them to whatever, 15 or 20 minutes, uh, I don't think it would kill us. Deputy O'Brien. Yeah, I, I agree with Ruth, but I don't think what you're proposing is that we don't invite the likes of Rory Hearn, for example, or other people in. I think you can have a session which is on the, the kind of technical aspects of the delivery of social housing, which is your local authorities and your departmental staff. 
you can have a separate session, which is what I would be proposing, which is on the agenda, which is around housing policy, and you bring in your Rory Hearns and you bring in your Michelle Norris's and people who aren't just academics but have direct experience of this and have lots of those fresh ideas. So I'd suggest we invite those people in under kind of housing policy law section. Let, let's be clear. Deputy, Co Deputy Coppinger, the people you have in mind, at the end of the schedule, if they haven't been included, bring it up again. Yeah, okay. Sure. We'll work to, is that fair enough to everyone? Okay. Uh, the private rented sector. Um, again, I don't want to debate on the sector. I'm looking for who the, uh, the members of the committee would like to, to uh, have as witnesses. Any proposal? Deputy O'Brien. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there are, are five concrete proposals. The National Economic and Social Council did a very good report on, on a thing called cost rental in the private rental sector. I can't remember the author of the report, but that individual would be one. Uh, the chair of the PRTB, um, again, I just can't remember the person's name, but again, that would be a very good person. I do think Threshold, just as the overarching body representing kind of uh, those of us who live in the private rental sector would be good, and Bob Jordan is, is their head. And then two other groups, there are, I think, two landlord representative bodies, so one or the other, I don't mind. I think landlords need to be part of the discussion. And there is this whole discussion around REITs um, and REITs coming in, buying up significant <coughs> portfolios of properties. I don't have somebody in mind. I'm trying to identify somebody, but I think that should be part of the discussion. Somebody who's involved in uh, the kind of the REIT end of things for us to interrogate that. Deputy Coppinger. Um. Yeah, I think this is an important one because it's the basis of where a lot of the homelessness is beginning. Um, I agree with some of those suggestions. I, I, I do think thresholds do run a, a massive helpline and are at the cutting edge of, and the, possibly the PRTB as well. But on top of that as well, I, I don't know if it will be here, Chair, you might clarify, or in another I'll session. i my best. But the whole issue of rent controls is something our, in your proposal... Or in one of the proposals, there was a proposal for a separate session on laws and, and, reg and that need to be brought in. I think we need to have some speaker on rent controls, how they operate in other countries or how they could be implemented here because it has to be a key thing that's decided on by this okay. committee. I'm not disagreeing so, with the issue. Yeah, so a speaker? A, do you, do, yeah, but do you, I'm going to be specific with you. Do you have anybody in mind or has anybody... Um, I think, um, well, somebody I suggested in our submission was uh, Professor PJ Drudy from Trinity College on rent controls. Um, in, in other, it depends on what aspect as well. If you're taking the legal question, because some people have said rent controls are unconstitutional, it, I don't know if you're taking. Well, we have a section separately. on legal issues generally. Okay. Um, yeah, well, that, that would be one person who could be asked yeah. to do an overview on rent controls. Yeah. Anybody else in the private rented sector? Dep Deputy yes, Burke. I, 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 I think, I think uh, of course, if, if, if the first six, uh, uh, element is satisfactory, we won't, we won't have to talk so much about the second element because the local authority housing development will have taken place and we won't be reliant on the private rented sector, which in turn has been reliant on the Department of